thanks for having me here. Okay. So today I'm actually talking about um, one of the core projects that um, Combay is actually doing. So um, that's me, a little bit about myself. So I manage data platforms and services team in Combase. Um, that include Combase data platform in traditional sense, as well as Web3 data infra and the blockchain research. I bought my first BTC in 2013 from Coinbase. <laughs> and my first alignment of Solidity Co was happened in 2016. I also actually built my own wallet company in 2016. Uh, for ERC20, getting UTXO, getting CryptoKitty running on the wallet. And, you know, that's it. And I have three kids, wonderful kids. Let's start from the agenda today. Okay, so we will walk through. Um, <clears throat> this is the agenda for the talk, right? And I will actually walk through the problem statement and talk about the solution, show you guys the number. At the end of the presentation, there will be some Easter egg, even that's after Easter. So let's get started. OK. <laughs> let's actually face it, right? Assessing, transforming, and analyzing um, blockchain data at scale in the near real time it is a very difficult problem. Currently, you guys actually use Doom Analytics, the graph, to solve some of the problem. But there will be still a lot of the room to actually improve. Um, when it comes to blockchain data, we have two problems here. One is called data availability. Another one is data agilities. Let me explain what each one actually means. Um, data, ability, uh, data availability, it is a um, very important project that has been very important problem that has been heavily discussed in the past couple of years because the Ethereum merge and L2, right? Um, it is super important because if there's no data, nothing much you can do about it, right? And more importantly, actually from the blockchain perspective, um, the data availability, it really means that data is complete. And in the sense that there's no censorship, no one will held in your block, as well as valid. That means no one is going to cheat on you, right? And for the detail of the data availability, you can um, take a look at, you can use your, um, uh, your phone to actually scan the barcode. Hopefully it works. You can have some extended, um, extended reading on that. Um, the second problem, this is a problem that I want to dive in, is called data agility. Um, data agility is probably a new concept that we propose. Um, it is actually a very overlooked concept. We argue that this is a key problem to solve blockchain data problem. What does it mean? It, just put it in the very simple tagline, it is usability of the data, right? A good example, um, project like Doom, expose the blockchain data in a SQL form so everyone can actually use it and create their dashboard. This is a very good example. Um, the interface for the Doom Analytics, it is SQL. SQL is great, but if we want more flexibility and efficiency, that's far from enough. Um, for example, from Coinbase scale, we need to actually um, use blockchain data to build Web3 apps. We need to integrate into different kinds of pipeline to deal with finance, um, doing analytics, and even actually building ML models. And sometimes we also even need to actually get the blockchain data to join with the off-chain data to build, for example, building NFT index, right? And all these things actually need to actually work along um, different kinds of SLA. Some of them you can wait, wait for a couple of minutes, delay, that's okay. Some of them you actually need to get a second or even sub-second return. Um, I think in this talk is here, right? I want to actually point it out. I think in Coinbase, I think we actually figure out a path how to achieve all this by building a, con by building a single platform. So let's go deep into the uh, 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 data agility, right? So data agility have two sub problem. One is called data layer problem. <clears throat> Another one is called compute, compute problem. And in this talk, we only actually focus on the data issues. So <clears throat> here are a set of unique challenge for the data agility that we see in Coinbase. Um, number one, we have many, many blockchains. And then a lot of the blockchain are heterogeneous. That means it's like it's not EVM, it's not uh, UTXO, 
for example, Solana is one example, right? And we now actually support EVM, UTXO, as well as Solana. I remember there's another, another blockchain that actually there that count as others. Um, that's number one. And then the number two actually for that is we need to cost and efficiency matters, right? Imagine that how painful it is after you wait for seven days and then spend 50K of your hard earning money from your VC, okay? And then you just realize, shoot, it's wrong. It's just miss a few, right? And then you need to do the whole thing again. And then you don't want to tell your VC that I just spend like, you know, one week time plus a salary and plus that 50K and then I need to redo everything again, right? We need to actually accelerate this process and making sure that the cost is manageable. That's the second problem. Okay, and then the third problem, which is the third bullet point here that's contain a lot of the things here, right? We need to have a platform. You can see that there's a different set of the data. We call that bronze, silver, um, gold, and diamond. By the way, this is not platinum, it's diamond, right? For, for whatever reason. So bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. You can take a look at that, right? For bronze data, we consider that as a block access level. And then for silver, that's actually a different kind of data set. You can put that in the snowflake. And then gold level, it is actually more towarding, um, uh, uh, more towarding on the uh, uh, NFT index utilization. And also, we can build an app on that. Right? These are the various of the use cases of the blockchain data. And you can solve one problem at a time. Okay? You can actually use Doom, for example, to do um, the ETL, a snowflake alike use case, but you can't use Doom to actually build NFT index, right? So we want to actually build one platform to solve all this problem. It is very difficult. So <clears throat> here is the answers, chain storage. Um, it is a backbone for blockchain data in Coinbase. You can consider that as a file system. Okay, it is a full and deep copy of each of the block near real time, and no data actually lost. And it's inspired by the change data capture patterns. Okay, and then it is using ELT instead of ETL. So uh, for, the, for people that want to actually know the difference, you can scan the barcode here to have the, the basic reading, the, the, the extended reading for ELT and ETL. Okay, and it is a blockchain data system. It has a lot of the blockchain native features. For example, it's real aware, and then it supports multiple protocols. So for example, it can speak native JSON, so you can put the data out from the system. You can read that as a parquet. You can read that as a Rosetta. And then we also implement some internal format within Coinbase as well. So let's actually get, get into here. So this is a, is it a 10,000 or one, or, or 100K? Okay, it's a 100K fit. Uh, I really mean 1,000. I just punched a couple of the more zero there, right? So it's an overview <laughs> on the system. So it has a um, couple of the key components. It's, it has an ingester, so it adapts to each of the, um, uh, the blockchain itself. It has meta, meta storage and the block storages, right? So meta storage, you can see that it's a key value pair, and the block storage storing the blockchain, the native blockchain information. And then it also has output format encoder, which we can transcode the particular blockchain block into the target format that you want. So you can be a Rosetta, you can be JSON, you can be Parquet, or you can be transforming them into a, um, a stream of a, a transaction, for example, right? And we have a gRPC layer that you can interact with all these components. So this is the, the overview of the diagram. So the blockchain, you have a capturing, and then we have transformations um, layers, and then it convert to different target formats. So um, due to the time constraint, there's a lot of innovations and very interesting behavior for the system itself. Um, but due to the time constraint, um, let's focus on just one interesting problem that I like most. 
this is called train or delta stream. So blockchain is a consensus system. And at any point of the time, you can assume that um, different node will have different view of the world, right? That's why reorg actually happened. Because when reorg actually happened is your particular node will pick the longest train to actually pick it, right? This is the canonical train. And even worse, have you imagined that um, usually you take the data out from a blockchain node, you don't take the data just from one single blockchain node. You take that from a group of blockchain nodes, right? For the redundancy, for the, for the robustness purpose. And then what if your blockchain node, they don't agree with each other? This is the disaster, right? So we implement a layers of, you can call that a consensus layers. Um, this is called train with all delta stream. And we do not want our user, for example, right? We do not want our user to, when they consume our data, they need to worry about which is the latest block and then they need to handle the real, all that sort of thing. They don't want to do that, right? The innovation is here, right? The train with all delta stream. It comes with two parts. One is delta, uh, one is a delta block stream. Okay, you can see that on top, on this line here. On this line here, am I blocking you guys? So let me actually give some space, right? You, people can subscribe to a data stream such that you add a block, add a block, add a block, and then when we all happen, you can see that that remove and remove and remove, right? Remove, remove, and then add, add, add. So you will have a monolithic stream that you know, you always actually know that if you subscribe to that stream, where the latest block actually is. So this is a stream. And then the second part for that is you have a table. We call stack table, where it's grouped by the block high, and then also within that particular block high, also actually sorted by the version number of the block. So if you look into this table here, the block high one is the block sequence one, that's actually the latest block. And then in the block high two, six is the, uh, the latest block. Block high three is the seven is the latest block. Block high four, is A is the latest block. So you will have one, six, seven, eight as a canonical trait. So we follow this kind of protocol so that the user can always actually see which is the latest stream, latest block, okay, where the canonical chain is. The good news is there's a pattern pending. So <clears throat> um, when we actually build a system, let's just talk about a um, particular performance characteristics. Um, a famous node provider, we are around 100 times better in terms of throughput. And then for the latency, you can see that I, you can do the math yourself. Um, let me stand this side, okay? So um, for the cost-wise, it's around six times better. And this is the highlight of the number. So we process the whole Ethereum in 10 to 20 minutes. So our engineer can actually process the whole Ethereum blockchain. For example, building an NFT index in 10 minutes and 20 minutes per iterations. And the latency is always 10 seconds. It's smaller than 10 seconds. We try to actually make it even shorter. The cost it is around one sixth of the traditional uh, uh, um, solutions. OK, what's next? Q&A? Well, probably not, right? <laughs> Let's do something better. So uh, we are very proud to actually announce that Chain Storage will be open sourced sometime in Q4 2022. So um, we need help, we need ideas, we need feedback, we need criticism. OK, and then better, we need co-contribution as well. So if you are interested in, um, Please, okay, you can actually add me. Um, I suppose to have a slide, but I forgot to put it in there. <laughs> you can actually ping me on Telegram or LinkedIn, okay? So that's all for the talk. It's only 23 seconds left, and any, uh, okay, any questions? Yes, yes, it does. So, um, there's already something in work. Um, train storage, it is actually powering um, Coinbase Cloud. 
a lot of the feature actually built on top. You can consider that that's as a backbone of that. It's, you can actually use those features, but if you want to actually make this one become a separate usable platform on that, we, we of course actually considering it as well. And it's not easy to host chain storage, but it's very rewarding. <laughs> yes, okay, that's it, right? Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you.